Welcome everybody. This is Jerry3904 on the MX Linux forum. I'm here to introduce a new MX Fluxbox video to you. This is a sequence to a sequel to the wildly popular MX Fluxbox 101 uh, that I put out about a month ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, I recommend that you uh, take a look at it because I won't cover material here that I covered there already. Uh, today I want to look at two apps I call they're so good that I call them power tools two apps that are going to come up with the point release of MX Fluxbox in a couple of weeks and uh, That's what we're all about. So I will get myself out of the way get a few screens out of the way and We're ready to go so the first of the two apps is the uh, MX iDesk tool. Those of you who have seen the introductory video, MX uh, Fluxbox 101, saw me spend quite a bit of time on that. And I'm going today to just show you a couple of new features that are going to be available with the uh, new MX iDesk tool coming out. It's pretty neat. So, uh, so let's start by taking a look at it. Um, here is what it looks like. Um, it has a couple of new features specifically on here. I'll highlight them. One is to locate a position precisely for an icon, not just drag, but locate precise. And the second is to directly edit an icon file. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, let's start with that one. Um, this the icons that you see on the desktop over to the left here, those are driven by a little config file that's located not in Fluxbox, but it's located in another hidden folder called iDesktop. For instance, if I take the Flux Help one, the red one with the question mark, and I say OK, then we'll see exactly what that currently looks like. There's a caption, we weren't using it before. There's an icon description. There's a location uh, for the screen where 90 uh, pixels on the x-axis, 91 on the y-axis. And then there's the actual um, command uh, that drives it. We've changed how that's going to look, um, but that's what this would allow us to do is to directly, I'll show you why that's a useful thing to do, is to directly write this file because otherwise you have to make a bunch of clicks, you have to know where it is and make a bunch of clicks and it gets annoying. So now we'll be able to do it right out of the application. So let's take a look at the precise position for an icon. Um, and the, what I thought we would do is a good example. Where would you ever use this? You see these four icons on the left side. They're more or less in the right position, but they're not exactly lined up. And I, pref I don't find that. I could try to drag them around, but I would rather have it look really professional, really sharp. And so I can do that. I can just, let's, let's double click this. Let's start with the one on the top, Flux Help Link. And now you see the same X and Y we saw in that file. It's already highlighted. So I'm going to actually change these and make it nice and easy and have it 100, 100. 100 on the X scale, 100 on the Y scale. Now keep your eyes on that icon and you'll see that it jumps to a location right there. Okay? so. That's kind of neat. And now I can line up the next one. Um, and the it's going to show me this. I have to cancel it. It thinks I'm still looking at that same icon. But now it'll give me a, a, a choice. And I want to have it go to the file manager, Tunar. And I'm going to set that one up. And you can see that that's at 105 and 207. So we're going to keep it the same distance from the x-axis, 100. I'm going to tab to the next one, and I'll make it nice and easy on myself, and I'll write 200. Um, and I'll watch that icon right here. You'll see it jump into place. It's nice and lined up. And so you can do this through the whole, the whole list 
I won't do any more just because it gets a little boring, but you get the idea of why it would be useful as an example of where it would be useful. And uh, it's nice to have that uh, it's nice to have that extra tool available because we didn't used to have it. We had to go into you had to go into the file and write it by hand. So uh, that's that's the first one. The uh, a second thing that's kind of neat right now is that it's not on this screen, but that I will let's let's directly edit an icon file. And we'll choose um, the iDesk tool because that shows the new format. And check this out. This is quite a bit different. We have we are now using options captions because if you notice when I move my cursor over there, we figured out how to make them visible when you hover over them. So we have that and the icon itself. This has got its coordinates. We could change those. I suppose we're looking right at it. We might as well do it. Um, change it to 100 and change this one to 400. Okay, and then what you see is something quite different. You see three command lines. Command 0, Command 1, and Command 2. Command 0 is what happens when you click on the left mouse button. And that's the one you normally would think about. Command 1 is one that you, um, it, you use. This is set by the program. And it's the middle click. So you put your finger on the scroll wheel and you press it. And that gives you Command 1. Command 2 gives you the option of adding another, uh, another program to launch with this same icon. So I decided I would add MX Doc Maker. Command 2 is a double click on the right hand side, on the right hand button of the mouse. So single click left button, single click middle button, double click right button. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how that goes here now that I've done that. I'll show you actually where that's defined. If you want to say, well, gosh, where, how do I know what they are? It's in the iDesk config file. And if I scroll down, you'll see down here, execute zero, left, single click, execute one, middle, single click, Execute two, right, double click, okay? And it's execute one, middle, single click that is set by, uh, is set by the program itself, okay? So now in this particular case, let me quit this basic iDesk tool. In this particular case, if I left click it, iDesk tool comes up. Now that happens to be identical to what happens when I middle click it just because that's always going to bring that up. But now if I double click it on the right button, I'll get MX Docs Make, Doc Maker. So it's kind of handy. Now I have um, both of those on the same button so that I can uh, think I'm going to go in and change the name. I'm going to look actually right at the icon file and I'm going to change it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, never mind. Um, it's not where I wanted to go. <laughs> I'm going to edit or view an icon. And I'm going to look at MXI desktop link and I'm going to call it MXFB, MX Fluxbox Tools. And now I've got to just go through all these again. So now when I hover over it, I have the generic title of MXFB Tools, and I know that I can get from a left single click, I can get MX, um, MX iDesk Tool, and from a right double click, I can get MX Doc Maker. So that's pretty neat. You can save a, a lot of trouble. Um, adding those, uh, adding that third command, it's called command two, right now is manual, but we're working on having that available out of the uh, GUI, out of iDesk tool, um, by the time of the release. 
Okay, now I want to take a look at MX Dockmaker, with the new app available uh, in a couple of weeks. As the name implies, it's a tool for creating and managing docks. Uh, it's a neat thing, it saves us a lot of trouble. If you want to look at the background of it, what's behind it for software and all that, then please look at the wiki article that I'm going to show you a little bit later. So I'm going to double right click again to get it to come up. And here's, here's the uh, basic operation mode. We can create a dock, we can edit a dock, we can delete a dock, or we can move a dock, okay? So I'm gonna start by creating a simple dock just to see, so you can see how it goes. I'm gonna create, and I'm gonna create a dock where I can do my calculations. I'm gonna call it calculate. Calculate, okay. Actually, I'm going to, for reasons that are known only to me, I'm going to actually copy that, so later I'll have to type it again. Um, and I'm going to add um, a calculator. Um, the one is called is calculator, and for so from reasons that make no sense to me. But anyway, and so there's calculator. It says dot desktop because this program picks up the desktop files for applications that are stored in the directory user share applications. And when it picks up the desktop file, that file also tells it what icon to use. And you can see the icon down here in the doc preview. You could use a command for, for uh, applications that don't have a desktop file if you wanted to, or where you didn't know, where they didn't have an icon. Some of the MX applications don't have icons in the software, in the uh, icon directory we use. And then you have three options. There are many more options available in the command line part. Uh, the size of the icons, this is sort of middle. That would, the 32 is small and 64 is quite big. The background around the icon and then the border on the icon. I'm going to leave these defaults for now. And I'm going to add another application. What else do I need? I need a spreadsheet. So I'll go LibreOffice and add Calc, which is the spreadsheet. Open it up. There's the icon for it. Same thing, 48, 48, black, white for the border. And now I'm going to just save this little doc um, like that. I'm going to locate it. I can locate it wherever I want. I'm going to locate it bottom center, in fact. And I'm going to call it, this is why I pasted that before, I'm going to call it Calculate and save it. Okay, edit. If you want to edit it, that makes sense. Ah, look at, there it is. There's my little dock right there. Uh, the icon on the left, of course, is the calculator. And the icon on the right is the spreadsheet. So a handy little specific folk, uh, specific purpose dock that I can just pull up anytime I want. So, so much for create. You can, you can add as many launchers as you want for applications. You will see in a couple of weeks that the uh, MX Fluxbox 2.1, the point release, will bring with it a default dock with 10 launchers on it, um, and that which gives you a lot of applications at your fingertips. We'll cover that when we get it. So much for creation. Let's see. Let's try to edit. I'm going to edit. And so I'm going to double right click again. I'm going to edit. I'll pick up our poor friend Calculate. And I think I don't like these white borders on this, on this, on this wallpaper. So I'm going to change the border. Uh, and in fact, I think magenta might be nice. Go to the next icon. This has a white border. I'm going to put magenta on it. And that's about it. So I'm going to save. Still bottom center. Do I want to overwrite? Yes, because I'm changing it. It's been saved. So when we click OK, we should see the effect. Um, but let me just let me do, pull it up this way. Docs and launchers, calculate. There it is. Once in a while, it doesn't show up right away. So there we edited the frame. We could have checked, we could have edited the little black background there, for instance, to make it match, uh, match the frame. Uh, then you would have had all magenta. 
There's lots of things you can do with it. There's about 20 predefined colors for frame and background that you can choose. So it's pretty nice. It radically changes how things look. Okay, third, um, let's try to see how we can move a dock. This is actually pretty handy because if you do it yourself, it takes, it's, it's annoying to try to move a dock. You have to go into the file and uh, do all sorts of things there. So we're gonna move a dock and you might have guessed I'm gonna move calculate again. And let's see, where do I wanna put it? I'm gonna put it over here on the right side because it looks a little lonely to me and put it right in the center uh, and close this. And there it is over there, which is nice. Actually, that magenta looks pretty good with these colors. Huh? I think it looks pretty sharp. And then finally, that's how you that's how you move. That's pretty easy. And finally, I'm going to delete a dock so I don't have to have it in my list. Uh, this doesn't just hide the dock because you can also hide docks, but this actually gets the dock out of the uh, out of the folder and deletes it. So I'm going to delete a dock, and you may have guessed I'm going to delete calculate. It wants me to confirm that. And there it goes. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, the one thing I wanted to show you before I leave this alone now is to show you how to um, not look at create. I'm going to just do tra-la-la here. Um, this is the easy way for me to show you the help file down here. And this, this takes you to the wiki, and there's an entire help file on MX DocMaker. Um, it has an introduction, um, it's how you use it. Um, it also has um, some suggestions about how to modify. And then if you're interested, it, it tells you technical details about how the doc scripts are actually laid out and what they do with them. People don't always look at the help files, but we put a lot of thought into them. And if you're interested, by all means, read through it and find out more about it when you want. <coughs> okay, that's it for these two guys. Um, the new additions to MXI Desk Tool and the new application, MX Doc Maker. I hope you'll enjoy them. I hope you enjoy this video. And stay tuned now for uh, MX Fluxbox, the 2.1 point release, which I'll probably release a, that video in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Bye.